can see Clara confirming that uh, we can hear us and see us perfectly, so that's a good information. Thank you, Clara. Um, so we have chosen this, uh, this setup of a web TV lab. Um, we think it's particular, particularly appropriate for, uh, for what we have to show today. Oh, Harry, good morning. <coughs> you can hear us. Thank you. Welcome, Harry. Uh, Laurent. Um, Laurent H. Thank you. Welcome to this session as well. And some more people coming. Um, so I was saying this setup of a web bench, <coughs> uh, web lab studio, a web TV lab studio is very appropriate for what we have to show. Uh, this is all about the topic of data converters <coughs> working at microwave frequencies, well into the microwave frequency domain, from the lowest band up to K without frequency converters, analog frequency converters, directly at the output of the DAC, that's what we'll show uh, now, and at the input of the ADC. And we talked about that before in some presentation, in some publication, but that was only on paper. This week, uh, we are able to show uh, for the first time, working hardware. So we can see the boards. We'll go into the detail of the uh, of the boards we have, the <coughs> setup we have, and the performance <coughs> measurements. Um, that's I think I hope it's going to be very uh, interesting for you to see this uh, in this format of a web TV studio. Um, and as you will see this, uh, I suggest you pay attention to the x-axis on this uh, all of these performance measurements. We're so happy to take a DAC uh, to this frequency domain. Um, it's been a lot of work. It's working. Uh, we're happy about that. I hope you will enjoy it. And now I will step aside. I see Justin coming in. Thank you, Justin. Welcome. Uh, I'll just step aside and be, uh, be acting as a moderator, taking your questions. <coughs> and I will leave the floor to uh, uh, Stefan and Romain. The floor is yours. Thank you, Nicolas. So welcome uh, everybody. My name is Stéphane Bress. I'm an application engineer for the Signal Processing Solution Business Unit. Uh, I'm supporting uh, both analog to digital and digital to analog converter. I'm also part of the support for <coughs> EasyStream, the serial interface protocol of communication uh, available on available sorry on the latest uh, Teledyne E2V data converter, um, like. Uh, so this uh, digital to analog uh, <coughs> converter we will present to you um, uh, today, uh, so the EV12 DD700. And good morning, good afternoon, welcome to this uh, live session. My name is Romain Pilar, I'm also an application engineer working with Stéphane uh, for the Signal Processing Solution Business Unit. We are very pleased to have you today for this uh, live session. Uh, we are very uh, happy and very excited to present to you today the EV12 DD700. So we'd like to propose uh, an introduction video that we have uh, pre-recorded last week. This is the same setup, so you will have an introduction of the setup, the board, the different features, and some performance achieved. So, and we'll be right back after the video to answer any of your questions. So. Enjoy the video and see you, see you soon. Good morning, good afternoon everyone. My name is Romain Pilar. I am with my colleague Stéphane Bress. We are applications engineers at Teledyne E2V and we are here to introduce for the first time the demonstration of our latest digital to analog converter or D2A converter, the EV12 DD700. This is a 12-bit resolution converter, a dual channel, with an update rate of 12 giga samples per second or 24 giga samples per second, depending on the output mode that will be described. Today, uh, this is with this first uh, silicone version that uh, Teledyne 2V demonstrates its strategy to create data converters, giving access to the entire micro spectrum uh, directly from the digital domain. So with an, with an output bandwidth above 20 gigahertz, as we can already see on the screen behind us, and with the introduction of digital functions, uh, this is the most advanced digital to analog converter on the market today, enabling very wide instantaneous signal generation at very high frequencies. On the analog section of the D2A converter, Teledyne E2V pursues a sort of tradition over the D2A converter generations with the capability to address frequency ranges uh, using multi Nyquist operation, using classical modes such as non return to zero or NRZ or radio frequency mode or RF 
in order to maximize the output power in the first or second and third Nyquist zones. The EV12 DD700 uh, introduces a new mode, the 2RF mode, in order to maximize uh, the output power in the fourth or fifth Nyquist zone, so uh, between 18 and 30 gigahertz, uh, considering a clock frequency at 24 gigahertz. The EV12 DD700 is suitable for modern digital signal generators without the need of up-converter stages. The D2A converter not only has microwave capabilities or exciting microwave capabilities, but it also embeds uh, digital functions in order to enable the digitization of traditional analog RF functions. To name these functions, uh, the converter has fast frequency hopping function that can be used for uh, communication encryption. There is the beamforming and beam hopping function uh, with amplitude and phase control uh, that can be used in multi-channel systems uh, such as digital or hybrid phased arrays uh, used in satellites in space or base stations on the ground. There is a digital direct synthesis function to make, to make it a very high frequency uh, DDS. Uh, there is a chirp generator for radar applications and then a digital up converter with interpolation factors uh, by 4, by 8 and by 16 uh, for users who don't need full uh, instantaneous bandwidth and uh, in order to reduce the interface between the D2A converter and the logic uh, component uh, like an FPGA. So Stefan, what can you tell us about the setup that we have in front of us? What are these boards? So there are two boards. The first board is the power supply board where we can see eight power blocks to supply the digital to analog converter. The second board is the product board with the EV12 DD700 digital to analog converter inserted in its socket here. There is also a Xilinx FPGA, a Kintex Ultrascale KU085. This FPGA is used to transmit the data to analog converter. The high-speed serial lane as supported by the uh, protocol of communication EasyStream, transmitting the data at a latent rate up to 12 gigabit per second. There are several connectors, 2.92 millimeters connectors, Two are used to input the clock frequency of the DAC, and these two ones are used to output the analog signals. To run the demo, we also need several pieces of equipment. These two equipment are provided by Rode Schwartz. We need a signal generator, a SMB100A, to generate the input clock frequency of the digital to analog converter. And this one is a spectrum analyzer, the FSW26, to display the analog output. We have also um, two evaluation boards of the BAL0020 SLG balloons. We use these balloons to convert the single indeed output of the signal generator to a differential input clock for the digital to analog converter. And to convert the differential analog output of a digital to an analog converter to the single in dead input of the spectrum analyzer. Finally, we also need this computer to communicate with the FPGA and configure the digital to, to analog converter through a USB communication. So now that all is set uh, to run the D2A converter, um, how do you control it? How do you control the component? Maybe can you describe the user interface? Yes. So, this is the graphical user interface after a successful startup. There are a lot of buttons and tabs. I will not describe all these tabs and buttons, but only the one used for this demo. At the top, first, we have a diode temperature button to monitor in real time the temperature of the digital to analog converter. The F-clock field allows to enter the clock frequency, the input clock frequency of the digital to analog converter. There is a reset, DAC but reset digital to analog converter button to reset only the EV12 DD700, a sync button to synchronize the serial communication between the FPGA and the digital to analog converter, a debug and monitoring button to uh, read the 
status of some register uh, inside uh, the DD7, EV12 DD700. And a pattern generator button. I will describe this uh, tab later. Just below on the left of the interface, we have the digital to analog uh, main controls to configure the different modes of the EV12 DD700. The output mode, we can select uh, NRZ, RF, and 2RF mode. Here, for example, the 2RF mode is selected. We can also select the resolution, 12-bit or 8-bit. The interpolation mode, we can choose to use the digital to analog converter in real mode, so with interpolation off, or in complex mode with interpolation by 4, 8, or 16. And there are also internal test mode. With them, we can generate ramp, constant value, flash patterns, and flat FFT waveform. These waveforms are generated inside the EV12 DD700. On the right, they are the tab used to, con to configure the digital feature of the EV12 DD700. On this tab, we can, for example, go here, the direct digital synthesis, synthesis tab, where we can select the Nyquist zone, the local oscillator frequency, we can choose to enable the DDS, and set the amplitude of the DDS. We can also configure a, a, a chirp. Uh, like in the DDS mode, we can select the Nyquist zone, but also the start frequency, the stop frequency, and the sweep rate of the chirp waveform. And in the frequency hopping tab, we can, through this table, list uh, the frequency we want to hop on, and stream the frequency words to the digital to analog converter by program programming it through SPI or a dedicated high-speed serial lane. In the beam hopping tab, we can select four zones to uh, define a different beam, hop beam hopping direction, beam direction. For each zone, we can configure the gain and the phase delay to apply. Finally, the last digital feature, the sync compensation, allow flattening the output spectrum. So, Stefan, can you show us how to create, generate a single tone pattern, let's say above 20 gigahertz, so using the 2RF mode, uh, with a clock frequency of 20 gigahertz? Uh, yeah, please, yeah. a single tone. So, first, I have to click on the pattern generator button. In this tab, we can uh, generate different waveforms, for instance, single tone, multi tone, or NPR. We select single tone. In the frequency field, I enter 20.15 GHz. And with this button, I generate and send the pattern to the FPGA. We are now, now able to uh, display with a spectrum analyzer the fundamental of the frequency generated. So here, we see a 20.15 GHz frequency with a SFDR relative to the carrier of 50 dB. So, great, Stefan. What about the digital features? What about the DDS, the chirp, the frequency hopping? For example, the DDS, can you show the same single tone at 20.15 gigahertz yeah. with using the DDS instead of the, the real mode? Yes, so I have to go back to the direct digital synthesis tab. Um, I enable the DDS, set the local oscillator frequency to 20.15 gigahertz and I can tune the amplitude up to the maximum amplitude. Yeah. And so we should have the same performance as before. So yes, we can see a SFDR relative to the carrier of 50 dB. So it's pretty good. And we have the same performance using 
the data transmission between the FPGA to the digital tunnel converter and using the embedded direct digital synthesis of the EV12 DD700. So Stefan, can you show us the chirp generator function? Uh, for example, with a chirp generated between 6.5 and 8.5 gigahertz? Yes. So I configured the signal generator at 10 gigahertz to generate a chirp in the second Nyquist in RF mode. So in the chirp tab, I set the start frequency to uh, 6.5 gigahertz and the stop frequency to 8.5 gigahertz. I enable the chirp and the amplitude, and we should see a chirp in the second Nyquist between 6.5 gigahertz and 8.5 gigahertz. So Stefan, can you show us a last example enabling the fast frequency hopping with an interpolated uh, pattern? Yeah, so I will generate in RF mode uh, between uh, 5 and uh, 10 gigahertz uh, an interpolated pattern. I just select uh, interpolation by four, and in the pattern generator, I select a complex pattern uh, to fill all the instantaneous bandwidths. I enable the pattern, so we can see uh, we have uh, this pattern in the second Nyquist in RF mode. I can then select interpolation by eight. We see a reduction by two of the instantaneous bandwidth. And we can also select by 16, interpolation by 16, and we all, again, we reduce by two the instantaneous bandwidth. In the frequency hopping tab, I select a different uh, frequency to hop on, 6 gigahertz, 9 gigahertz, 7 gigahertz, and 8 gigahertz. I enable the frequency hopping feature, and now we can see the pattern jumping between these frequencies. Thank you, Stéphane. So uh, you have shown us a very powerful uh, D2A converter. In fact, it, this is more than a D2A converter. Uh, to summarize, we have the very first silicon version of a multi-channel data converter uh, capable to generate signals up to the K-band, which of digital functions that will enable the next generation of transmit systems. Welcome back to uh, the Web TV studio. So we're live from, uh, from Grenoble again. I do not see questions in the chat box at, for the moment. Uh, we've, we've seen the chat box works really well. I've seen the greetings <coughs> from JB, Justin, Laurent, Harry, and Clara earlier on. So you can go ask any questions or comments you want. We'll address each question or comments that you make as we go through this session. In the meantime, while we wait for questions, um, Roman, Stefan, we, we know the typical questions that uh, customers would have when they think about uh, adopting or choosing a DAC like this into their designs. Can we, uh, can we choose some of these typical questions and, yeah. and uh, look at what the answer would be? Yes, yeah, so maybe we can uh, start with a summary of the main uh, specification. So uh, if we can display so, uh, the slide. <coughs> Um, so now you should see uh, so uh, this slide with uh, EV12 uh, DD700 main specification. So we can start for the main uh, benefit of this uh, digital tunnel converter. It's output bandwidth, so 25 gigahertz <coughs> for the <coughs> minus 3 dB analog bandwidth. Uh, but we can generate a signal beyond, so just uh, after 25. Um, <coughs> To um, address uh, this bandwidth, we have a uh, free uh, output mode, selectable output mode, so NRZ, RF, and 2RF. Uh, the 2RF mode is uh, introduced on this uh, digital tunnel converter for the first time to uh, optimize uh, the output power, power in the fourth and fifth uh, Nyquist. So uh, if we go back to the spectrum analyzer uh, screen, uh, we have uh, an illustration of this capability to sample in, uh, uh, in this Nyquist. So here we, uh, we presented uh, just uh, before in the video uh, interpolation by 16 uh, coupled with uh, frequency hopping feature. Uh, now we <coughs> see uh, on this screen, uh, maybe we can uh, switch on the, uh, on the 
a spectrum screen, uh, please, uh, DJ. And so, uh, guess the, the attendee can uh, better uh, have a ha can have a better view uh, of the spectrum analyzer. And so we can see here so uh, the fifth uh, Nyquist between 20 and uh, 25 gigahertz. Uh, so using the two RF output mode. Um, so just to give some detail, we are in uh, the clock input of the EV12 DD700 is configured uh, to uh, uh, 20 gigahertz. And so, uh, yeah, we can. Uh, And you have can uh, this great performance. And you can see here the frequency hoped uh, on the different uh, markers, <coughs> 21.5 here, the M1, uh, and then 22, 23, 24 gigahertz. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so um, this frequency hopping feature is inside the DAC, and it will be able to, s to jump really, really fast <coughs> from one frequency to another. I think it's one, yeah. it's probably the fastest uh, frequency jumps that you can get on the deck. Yeah. Um, we have one question. Oh, we are, okay. One question from Hall, HOL, asking, what is the max bandwidth supported? <coughs> so today, uh, we are clearly showing some uh, demonstrations, some measurements uh, up to 25, 26, uh, if we can push a bit further. Uh, in our lab, we have uh, another FM, F FSW, Uh, in order to be able to measure um, uh, at, a, at a higher frequency range. So m m maybe uh, if we can switch back to the slide set. Uh, I can't remember if we have this slide, so maybe the next slide. Ah, sorry. <laughs> so you can see here on the bottom right the theoretical Uh, output power versus for the different for the three modes. So, the output power on the y-axis and the frequency uh, output frequency on the x-axis. So you see here the output power for the NRZ mode in uh, the red curve, the RF mode, uh, uh, the blue dashed curve, and the green dashed uh, curve for the two RF mode. Uh, <coughs> we can see, for example, so this is uh, up to 30 gigahertz. You can see that um, the uh, the RF mode for frequency higher uh, than 30 gigahertz, we can see the start of an, another lobe um, that will that will provide uh, higher uh, power uh, in the um, in the further Nyquist zones. So uh, clearly, this component is uh, today uh, quite is quite new in our lab. Uh, we have done some preliminary measurements, and we keep on going, uh, keep on following the measurements that we that we have to do to characterize, uh, to fully characterize the D2A converter. Output bandwidth is clearly uh, one of the main um, point of interest, so we'll push further uh, beyond 30 gigahertz to 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 see how it behaves uh, beyond beyond this uh, this limit. Okay, maybe if we can stay on the slide we were, there was <coughs> a, a question from Laurent H on power consumption. Mm -hmm. I think, Laurent, the power consumption is going to change uh, sometimes significantly depending on, depending on how we configure the DAC, <coughs> how we use it. Do we use two channel, one channel? Do we uh, use enable or disable certain digital features? And depending on the clock frequency, There'll be variation of power consumptions. It was shown on the slide before uh, some of the typical uh, power consumption values. I think with this DAC, what we will do also is that we will uh, give a recommendation of how to use it, uh, how to set it up uh, for different classical frequency band. And these different setups will have a different power consumption associated with it. Uh, maybe that's, uh, that's the best answer uh, we can give. Maybe you can switch to the to the slide deck to to show the typical uh, power consumption values that uh, that we can reach. Yeah. Thank you. So you can see here for the different modes, the different configurations, uh, either in single channel or dual channel, uh, the typical power dissipations. For example, if you take uh, the conf the following configuration, so without beam forming, without interpolations or interpolation factor one, here in single channel, uh, you will burn only 3.3 watts. Uh, 
in, in the NRZ mode. And uh, 5.8 uh, watts when using the dual channel mode. And when you configure, when you are using uh, the beamforming uh, features and the interpolation factor by uh, 4, 8, 16, you can see on the bottom right of the, um, of the table, uh, we are reaching the 8 watts also. <coughs> so really, depending on the configuration on the digital features that are, that are used, uh, the, the, the power consumption uh, goes within this range. Thank you, Romain. Yep. There's another question from Laurent H. Are there <coughs> limits to the number of DACs that uh, you can sync together? Or well, we can <coughs> say maybe these early beta sample engineering samples, we're going to do a silicon respin on them. And <coughs> after that, we will have uh, the full uh, nominal uh, behavior. And the, it does have a chain sync feature. And, and there is theory, theoretically no limits to the number of DACs we can sync. Uh, but we're going to <coughs> measure this in different uh, configuration and provide a more uh, detailed answer once we we, uh, we have progressed with the project, made more <coughs> measurements, and, and done the silicon respin. But you can trust, before we go to production, yes, you'll be able to sync a, a good number of DACs. Um, with some customers, we are working on these large antenna array radars with antenna arrays, uh, with very large number of channels that people want to sync together. Uh, we may work by cluster, this is ongoing work, and, uh, and we will release also some uh, application recommendation on how to do this. This is, this is work in progress, it's a very interesting topic. M Thank you, Laurent, for the question. Do you want to add something to that? You want to add something? Uh, Maybe we can add a following command that uh, we are uh, currently developing the this board with uh, within the interstellar edge 2020 uh, funded project in which we will have uh, two d2a converters uh, in parallel connected to an fpga module so this is an ongoing development and this will also demonstrate the capability to synchronize um, the two d2a converters so this this is a, a work uh, done uh, within the 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 consortium uh, involving uh, Airbus, TAS, and, um, and Fraunhofer Institute, and uh, Teledyne E2V. Thank and you, Romain. And this uh, is the first step. The last uh, things we can <coughs> add on synchronization, so we have uh, EV12 DD700 uh, has the capability to chain uh, the data converter uh, to enable multi-device uh, <coughs> synchronization, but uh, you can also uh, use a star or point-to-point -point topology, both topology, uh, chain or uh, star uh, are possible with uh, <coughs> this uh, EV12 DD700. Thank you, Stefan. We have another question from Hall, HOL. Do you have built-in inverse sync filter for NRZ, RF, and 2RF mode? Isn't that the async feature? Yeah, indeed. Comment on that? <coughs> we have a slide to show you diagram and how it works. Um, I think we don't have a slide, we just have a slide of the architecture here we yeah. can okay. uh, switch on. So DJ, can you show? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so we see that uh, there is a sync compensation uh, <coughs> feature available uh, for uh, the two channel, uh, so DAC, uh, DAC B and A, uh, and uh, this feature is available for yeah, NSZ, RF, and mm -hmm. uh, two RF uh, modes. Yeah. yeah, and this was uh, a bit shown into the, the video. Uh, this, uh, in the user interface, uh, there is this tab uh, in order to, to optimize the sync compensation for the mode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are the two output. coefficients to tune to, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, these are flat, embedded uh, in, yeah. They, they are embedded into the D2A converter. So, Hall, I hope this answers your question uh, on the inverse sync filter for NRZ, RF, and 2RF mode. <coughs> if not, keep, uh, keep asking uh, additional questions. Actually, anybody, you can, can keep sending your question. I have a new one from Laurent, Laurent H. Um, Enob, question mark. What can we say about Enob? This is, this is a good question because uh, it is a... Uh, <laughs> the characterization, uh, Laurent, is, uh, is really on starting. It's and all these data are ongoing and will produce uh, information uh, or, um, I would say, characterization reports in the near future. So this is really 
ongoing characterization. So today, uh, maybe we can we, you, we can al already see some target values that uh, uh, if we can, if we switch on the on the slide deck, please, uh, you can see Laurent some uh, some values here in this table. So these are the target values. <coughs> And uh, for example, you see the enob uh, at the different frequencies in for the different modes uh, there. So uh, at one gigahertz, for example, in the NRZ mode, so first Nyquist, uh, using the 12 giga samples per second clock, uh, the enob is uh, nine bits. So again, these are targets, and pretty minimal values will be uh, uh, comforted by uh, the characterization. Thank you, Romain. We have no new <coughs> questions here. Laurent, I hope it, it answers some of your uh, questions on, on, uh, on ENOB. Uh, and so we, we don't have all the answers <coughs> to everything as we have chosen to show you uh, working <coughs> demos from the first engineering samples while the characterization work is still ongoing. So at least if you, if you make yourself known to us that you are interested in receiving new information <coughs> on this work, uh, or if you follow our publications, mm -hmm. you're going to see these measurements coming out in our in our publications in the following weeks and months. Uh, the pack of information related to this DAC is going to uh, increase with more and more data. <coughs> At the moment, uh, if you uh, Google the part number EV12 DD700, that will take you to our product page where there is already the preliminary data sheet. Uh, but this page um, will be uh, Complemented, we'll receive new information. We we'll post new PDF documents as we go, week after week, month after month after month. We we'll update data sheets, application notes, and more <coughs> data. Um, it's uh, if you're really interested in this deck, it's maybe worth uh, bookmarking this page uh, to go back to it and find um, find the new documents we will publish in the coming weeks. Laurent is thanking us for the answers. Okay. I have no new questions uh, for the moment uh, on the chat box, uh, but Roman Stefan, do we have uh, <coughs> other classical question we expect from customers uh, or any engineers about to use this DAC? Sure, M maybe we can discuss a bit more about how our customers can evaluate the component and we can present uh, um, yep. the boards that uh, the evaluation boards that would be offered. Yep. So again, we can uh, go back to the slides. So <coughs> uh, you already uh, mentioned the Interstellar project yes. and uh, <coughs> the future uh, evaluation board uh, embedded embedding uh, two EV12 DD700 <coughs> to uh, uh, yeah, uh, evaluate uh, the multi-device synchronization. Uh, we don't have a date for this evaluation board uh, uh, yet just uh, mm -hmm. at this stage, uh, but uh, we will uh, provide uh, by the end of this year, uh, so Q Q4 uh, 2020, uh, the board we have on, on in front of us. So this is the board used by our uh, characterization team in our lab to evaluate and characterize uh, this product. <coughs> um, this board, we name it a monolithic board because it embeds uh, both uh, the EV12 DD700 uh, digital to analog converter and the FPGA. So it's a Xilinx uh, FPGA, the K Kintex Ultrascale KU085. Um, and uh, we will also provide, uh, this board is under uh, development, uh, we, we will also provide uh, next year, so <coughs> Q2 2021, um, double width FMC plus mezzanine board embedding uh, only the EV12 DD700 uh, to be interfaced with uh, FPGA development kit uh, available on the market. Uh, so we have identified uh, several uh, development board available with uh, two FMC plus connectors. Uh, with a different uh, configuration in terms of number of uh, high-speed serial lane per uh, FMC plus connectors. Uh, this will um, indicate uh, which mode uh, we can use with this FPGA development board. So with this table we, you see just uh, uh, you see now, uh, you can see that with uh, an, FF, um, an FPGA, FPGA development board with 
uh, two FMC plus connector and 24 uh, high speed serial lane available per connector, you can uh, use all uh, modes of this EV2 at BD700. And uh, if you, uh, yeah, let's say, remove some high speed serial lane, uh, you will lose some uh, modes. For instance, uh, uh, using uh, a FPGA development board with uh, only um, uh, 20 lane on each connector, you, you, you can't use uh, the second channel uh, yeah, for all uh, real, for example, uh, real mode or complex mode using the interpolation uh, uh, feature. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, for all this evaluation board, feel free to contact <coughs> us for details uh, and to discuss your requirements. Thank you, Stéphane. Uh, we still have another 10 minutes before the end of this session. Uh, we see no new question for the moment in the chat box. Do not hesitate to um, ask new questions or make new comments and we will uh, address them. Uh, is there another classical question we expect from customers that we can uh, cover? Uh, yeah, maybe I can ask a question to Romain if you go back to the slide. Uh, yes, uh, <coughs> for example, uh, can we use one core in RF and the other in NRZ or two RF mode? So the answer is uh, yes, but it depends on the mode that you, that you want to use. For example, you can see here on this table uh, the compatible modes that can be used together on one channel and the other. <coughs> so I uh, to remind you that um, in order to use the NRZ or the RF mode, uh, the maximum sampling rate, the maximum input clock frequency is 12 gigahertz, 12 giga sample per second. But for the two RF mode, uh, you need to input uh, twice this nominal frequency that is used for the NRZ or RF mode. So with an with a input clock frequency up to 24 gigahertz. So due to this constraint, um, you can only activate uh, NRZ or RF on different channels. But for the two RF mode, it has to be configured for both channels. Since there is only one input for the clock signal, um, when you are using the, the clock-related frequency to the 2RF mode, uh, you have to use it. As you can see, the, the bottom right uh, of the table, uh, both cores, both channels can be used in 2RF mode. We have one new question coming in from Hall HOL. <coughs> what is the memory length of the waveform supported? Do we have some information on that? Um, maybe I can check uh, here. <coughs> uh, maybe I, I just see here the number of samples we can gener we, ju we used uh, we can use up to uh, sixty five thousand samples. Uh, I don't have the right uh, so the this maximum is what number. This is what for what we show here on the screen. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> 65k samples. Mm. Yeah. Um, we have to, I think we have to check this uh, in order to provide the, the yeah. right answer. Yeah, yeah it depends for the maximum on the yeah, memory yeah. length of the FPGA. Yeah. Not, not sure about that. Uh, I don't have the the figure in my mind neither. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you for the question, Hall. Uh, I, I think that is one, one of the questions we have to come back later yeah. uh, with, more, with more details. Uh, you can keep sending questions <coughs> as we go. We still have a few minutes left, about like five minutes before the end. Uh, we can make final comments on how we move forward into the future with that or <coughs> answer some other classical questions that we expect from... Uh, from system designers. Um, or maybe a comment first, uh, just to emphasize again that uh, you can see here on this, uh, on this setup that uh, we have in front of us, that you have also in front of you, uh, the output of the D2A converter is directly connected to the spectrum analyzer only through a balloon. There is clearly... That's all there is. There's no frequency converter, right? <coughs> yeah. Oh, Down thank there. you. Yeah. We will have a zoom. So just waiting for the zoom. Thank you very much. So you can see here, this is the output of, a DAC. of the DAC. Uh, on one channel, you have a differential signal that going through, going to uh, a balloon in order to uh, to convert from differential to single-ended, in order to be able to feed 
are to input into the FSW. And this is the balloon for the clock. So clock input. So again, you have one single-ended uh, uh, output of the signal generator converted to differential signal and going to the D2A converter clock input connectors, which are there. That's really to re-emphasize that the output frequencies we see uh, above 20, 25 <coughs> gigahertz, there is no special effect. It's no, straight this out is of it. Uh, straight out, directly. To the spectrum analyzer yeah. to the screen. Yes, from the bits to the spectrum analyzer. Maybe uh, we can also uh, um, explain for uh, people who, who are not familiar with the data serial interface. Yeah. Uh, if we go <coughs> back to the slide uh, to see uh, a description of the interface. Uh, here we can see that the Evital DD700 is uh, interfaced with the um, uh, FP if logic device, so like an FPGA uh, through a 32 high speed serial lane, 16 by uh, channel, per channel. Uh, so it uses uh, EasyStream, so it's a serial interface protocol of communication. Uh, it can be implemented on any FPGA, FPGA integrated in a high speed serial lane, like uh, Xilinx FPGA, Intel FPGA, Microchip FPGA, and uh, Nano Explorer FPGA. Uh, Nano Explore already uh, embeds uh, this protocol in its transceivers. Uh, and for the others, we provide on easystream.com some uh, transmitter uh, design example in the HDL uh, to be implemented uh, at the moment in uh, um, Kintex Ultrascale KU040 Xilinx FPGA and uh, in uh, ARIA 10 <coughs> GX uh, for uh, Intel FPGA. Um, so the current uh, design uh, instantia instantiates uh, four lanes, but uh, in the near future, we will uh, uh, provide uh, a, dedicated, a dedicated uh, blo uh, block design uh, for the EV12 DD700, like we, do, like we did for the EV12 uh, AQ600, so uh, an already existing product, uh, which is a, an ADC. Thank you, Stéphane. I see no new questions on the chat box. <coughs> um, are we clear with the typical questions we wanted yeah. to cover? Yeah. yeah. So maybe the final comments uh, about this demo, <coughs> this type of DAC and the matching ADC that is on, on the other side of the table and will run a similar presentation in 15 minutes on the same web TV studio. We create these components really um, with the intent to help you system designers to create uh, in the 2020s, this decade we are just starting, uh, systems with a lot more softwareization of RF. Uh, we want to uh, help you design a piece of RF where the frequency domain, the waveforms and the service the system provides is a lot more defined on the software side than on, on the hardware side, even the frequency plan. Um, by creating these building blocks, such as a DA converter and ADCs, uh, which operates in multiple frequency bands up to K, that is really, uh, really our intent. And uh, you will see more communication on this topic. We will release by the end of this week or next week uh, a very important uh, white paper developing further this theme of RF softwareization and how we are contributing to this uh, with our D2A and A2D uh, technology. Of course, it takes more than us. It takes uh, you and everybody <coughs> who provides the building blocks from the D2A to the antenna and from the antenna to the A2D. It's a, it's a very exciting innovation journey that all of us in the industry are going to live in the 2020s. And we are we're extremely excited about that. Uh, we just want to be good at what we do, which is A2D and D2A technology. And the final point, this DAC and the matching ADC that you'll see later, they are, we will release them as standalone components that you can put aside, uh, side by side with an FPGA. Um, classic way of using uh, data converters that's uh, been uh, out there for, for years. But we also want this data converter. Um, we are designing it so that uh, you can use it far away from the FPGA on the antenna side. Uh, an antenna where you would no longer have uh, 
coaxial harness, RF harness, to go to the antenna, but instead have a digital harness on fiber and have a data converter on the antenna side. You will see publication from us next year <coughs> with uh, application uh, papers and uh, examples and demonstration uh, on how to do this, how to manage the different types of signals uh, through fiber, uh, keep good control of synchronization and do all, all the things that are required to make this work. That will be a topic for next year. Uh, and what else should we say? Oh, very important thing as well. This data converter technology, we uh, will also make them available uh, for a system in the package. Uh, we provide, we are increasing our capability inside uh, our factory here to be on system in the package solution. Uh, you might have seen that uh, we have communicated some uh, uh, partnership with Xilinx <coughs> and we're also doing some partnership with Nano Explore. Um, their, their FPGA dies can be integrated in system in the package we make here with this data converter technology. So you certainly have seen a, a popular RFSOC device from Xilinx. Think of this device, but with uh, a much higher frequency domain. Uh, changing the order of magnitude of the frequency capability on a device like RFSOC is something that we want to deliver rather sooner than later uh, in, in a time scale of two to three years from now with the same data conversion technology. So that just to give you some perspective of what we are going to do from there into the <coughs> near and midterm uh, mid future. And I see no new questions from you on the chat box. Before closing, I just want to remind you in 10 minutes, we'll start the demo of a matching ADC on the other side of the table in the same Web TV studio. But there is also another Web TV studio in another room where colleagues saw, will show some interesting things. There is a demo uh, running also at, uh, in 10 minutes and also again tomorrow about uh, microprocessors, microprocessors into their uh, ecosystem with a software stack for flight certified electronics, for autonomous systems, and also a very interesting demo about power screening of microprocessors, the difference between static and <coughs> dynamic power consumption, and how do we screen microprocessors to deliver only those with the lowest power consumption. So lowest power consumption means easier cooling and also uh, less energy to bring to them. Uh, Thomas on the other side has uh, two motherboards with two processors. One is power screened by our factory, the other is not. You will really see the difference. He will show you uh, this demo with a thermal imaging camera from the colleagues of Teledyne Darsa. You can really see the difference in temperature and ask all the questions you want to Thomas. He'll be available like we are to answer any questions on that. And, and right after, uh, colleagues from the manufacturing services will give a, <coughs> uh, a webinar presentation <coughs> and answer questions on camera on uh, system in package capa uh, capacities and capability that we are developing at Teledyne E2V. So there's, there's a lot going on today and tomorrow. Uh, the same demos will be repeated tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon as well, uh, three times during the day tomorrow. So I hope this was useful. There is still no new question. So maybe we can close uh, this session for now. I uh, want well, to thank you very much for taking the time to be with us, and I hope it's been useful for you. Um, thank you. Thank bye -bye. you. Have a good, Have a good day. day. Thank you. Bye-bye.